Good morning everyone, it's Carol again from the Craft Emporium. This is the third video relating to the ta -da, envelope journal. So today we're going to cover the cards that go inside this journal. Oh, I've got me got me all important brew. Let me have a slurp, hang on. Oh that's better. Okay. So yesterday we did the journal itself and we added the pages. Now you'll notice that I've changed the colour of my pages. Yesterday I went for coffee dyed pages. Today I got up and I thought, do you know what, I'm actually going to do them avocado dyed papers because of the um, images that I'm going to be using. They're pink. So I thought it kind of tied it all together so you can see with the colorways they, they all kind of blend really really nicely so I changed it up to um, avocado dyed papers and you'll see as well that I also corner punched the papers as well now then as I say we are going to cover put that to one side we're going to cover the journaling cards that sit in here now they pull out of the envelope bit that we cut open so the pocket that we created here from the envelopes that's where they are going to sit so you basically open that up slot that in there Bob's your uncle Fanny's your aunt okay and it just adds a little bit of extra something now you could leave it in there and then just open this up so it looks like a flip and then you've got your pages to write on or you can use it as a little mini journal that you pull out and then use now there are a few options <coughs> that I just want you to sort of consider before we actually do this so that's the card that I created for the original one but there's no reason why you can't use any greetings cards that you got maybe at Christmas or maybe for your birthday that you want to keep and you could make those into these little mini journals as well. Now there's no reason why you can't make those as an individual journal of its own accord and just slot some papers in there. This was from a friend of mine, Debbie, from Singapore. Thank you, Debbie. Love it. Um, but just to show you... It will just uh, open it up. It will just slot inside of there. So you will need to check on the size because if the card is too big, obviously it won't fit in. So it's a nice way of keeping your greetings cards that you maybe want to keep. All right. So that slots in there nicely. You may need to trim some of them down um, if they're a little bit too big. So that's one consideration. The second is that you could use an envelope, another envelope, and you could actually put the flap inside of the pocket itself. Now this one's actually too big, but it was just to give you the idea. So that would slot in there, if it'll go in, come on. There we go. So that would slot in there and then that in itself would then become a flip and then you've got another pocket here. So you could just decorate up an envelope or you could do a combination of all of them. So you could do cards and you could do envelopes. I've got a hair in my mouth. <laughs> Sorry about that. Third option is um, sometimes we buy packs of greetings cards and I got these from the works buy one get one free for two quid really pretty get three different types of uh, cards in here now I've used some already so I'm hoping there's some cards in there yes okay so you could use a greetings card like this for exactly the same thing obviously I wouldn't want to keep that so I would probably cover that over if I was going to use these again I would need to check that they were the right size and Again, that should just slot in there. Uh, 
and it does exactly the same thing and it actually goes really nicely with that pink okay so a few options for you to consider now I'm going to use the blank ones that came with the envelope pack that I purchased because I want to decorate them up so that they all kind of it's a bit of a, a mix and match sort of set <coughs> excuse me now one of the things that I would say is just check your cards before you actually add them to your journal the envelopes are made to just fit the card in nicely now we want it to slide in and out quite easily so again if I just put that in there see it just fits so I'm actually going to trim this down just a fraction so that it slides in and out nice and easily all right so I'm going to trim some off this top edge up here I also noticed as well I'll show you this one Can you see I've got a slight lip there from where it's not been folded quite correctly so I um, just trimmed up this edge here to make it so that it was equal so as I say I'm just going to trim a little bit off the top and I always like to pull down I don't like to push this up because I find it drags a little so I always find it better and especially if I'm doing something thick like this card I like to pull it down instead so I'm just going to trim a little bit off. I'm not going to measure it because I know the card fits. I just want to make it fractionally smaller. So I've trimmed off about an eighth of an inch-ish. Okay, so that should slot in and out quite easily now. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to cover the front and the back of my card. And I also want to cover the insides as well. On the original one that I did, I didn't do the insides, but I'm actually going to do that today. So, first of all, I need to measure, because I need to measure this surface area. And this measures four and seven eighths. Now, the image that I want to put on here, I want the card to act as a little bit of a border. So I'm going to have an eighth of an inch border all the way around. So I need to take an eighth off for this side and an eighth off for this side. So that's a quarter of an inch. But if I look at my ruler and I go, right, I want to want two, two one eighths off. So that's one, that's two. So I'm actually going to cut this to four and five eighths wide. I've got a pencil to hand. What do you mean you don't know? Um, there we go, got one. So I'll never remember this, will I? So four and five eighths by. Again, measure the length. And I want to take an eighth off from each side. So one, two, so six and five eighths six and five eighths now i can write it on this card because i'm actually going to be covering it over so no one will see now i'm going to be using the part of my um digital kit and i'll just show you the pages so in the digital kit that I've created there's this one which is the unlined version so there's no lines I've got one that's very very there we go very very subtle lines in the background and that means it just means that you can write in this space here and in this space here and down here so that it creates a nice interesting effect where you're actually going to write now this framed border area you could actually ignore all of this and just write in this area here or you could stick a picture on so there's a few options with the actual page um, but that's why I like the the lined version because I think it just gives you a few options for writing on 
Now I did already cut these up, but I'm going to trim them just a little bit smaller. I think so. Four and five eighths wide. Four and four five. There we go. Four and five eighths. Yeah. I'm just going to trim that little bit off there. Four and five eighths. What was the other measurements? Come on. Six and five eighths. Uh, you weren't quick enough. Okay. Six and now this is the only thing I don't like about my Fiskars trimmer. That bit there. Trying to work out a measurement on that bit. Bit of a pain in the bum. Seven, six, five. So it's that little notch there. So what I do is instead of trying to work it from that six inch up where my five eighths is, I work from the seven backwards. And I find that the, the edge of the plastic is actually the six and three quarter inch mark, if that makes sense. <laughs> to anyone that's mathematical minded, you'll know what I mean. Okay, uh, I want to do the same for the back as well, Carol. Okay, so four and five eighths wide, four, five. So. Just going to trim that little bit off there, and I want it to six and five eight seven six five. There we go. So that will now fit on there and give me that little bit of a border all the way around. Can you see that? Okay, so that's those two cut and ready and raring to go. Now I'm going to cut two of these the same size to go on the inside. So four and five eighths wide. They will fit now nicely on the inside. Got my bits of plastic, and I've got my distressing committee bedabba, and I'm just going to ink up the card quickly on the outside around all four sides and I'm just going to pay a little bit of extra attention to the corners as you can see how it gives it that sort of slightly rounded effect is a bit like watching paint dry I'm afraid so I won't bother with the inside one but I would normally do the inside as well okay uh, but for time's sake, and to save you guys getting bored, I'm not going to do that. Now then, the other thing that I want to do is I just want to ink up the edge of this. So I'm going to place this on my plastic, and I'm going to do that little circular motion bit again. And again, this is because it just takes off that white edge, or cream, depending on the colour of the paper that you've used, from the core of the paper. 
and it just helps it to blend into the background of the card a little bit more. Of course it also makes it look that little bit more vintage too. Now if you do really big swooping circles and have your dibby dabber on the there you go, that's what it does. If you have it too far onto the page, you get a block piece of ink. Now you can't get rid of that, but what you can do is remember that when it dries, it dries a little bit paler. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to not press very hard and do that little bit more inking down this side come in a little bit further onto the page and I'm not going to go over that same spot because the more I go over the same spot the more ink it will add to that spot so you can see now look how it's blended in that little bit more just means I've got to do that all the way around now oh well It'll just make it look extra vintage now, won't it? So that's where you need to just be a little bit careful. And if you want to, have a bit of a practice on a on a scrappy bit of paper. No one's expecting you to be an expert straight off. A new amongst us is an expert, eh? Huh? Huh? Yeah, all right. Nick is Nick the booksmith. Okay, so that's going to go on there put that to one side and again I'm going to use my Kalal glue because I don't want the the ridges that the white PVA glue can give me um, just by running it on as I'm doing here now if I was painting it on my PVA glue then it wouldn't give me the ridge but I haven't got time to sit here and paint glue again you don't want masses and you don't want to go right near the edge because you don't want it oozing out everywhere. Plonk that on there. Because it's a liquid glue as well, I've got enough time to just manoeuvre it about a little so that I can make sure that I'm happy with its position. That's that. Okay. Just going to turn it over and do the one on the back. Now, if I wanted to, I could have corner rounded the card, I could have corner rounded the papers, I could have added a decorative punch on the corners. thing is and this is where you need to get a little bit adventurous and have a play this is at the end of the day is only paper if you get it wrong just do another one learn your lesson by it even use this as an example piece if it's not turned out quite as you wanted use it as your example piece remember what you did don't do that again um, but have a play because, you know, this is about you creating a little journal that suits you and your needs. So, don't always feel that you've got to follow a tutorial exactly as it is. This is about playing and having a little bit of fun. Now, I need to make sure that this is the right way up before I go and stick it on. Yeah be nothing worse with than me sticking it on and then going like oh it's upside down okay that way on add my glue There we go. <laughs> I don't know what that was in hate of. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. Wiggle it just a little bit. Make sure it fits. 
all nice and lovely. Okay. Yep, liking that. Okay, and then we're going to do the bits on the inside. Yeah, plastic doofers. Now, because this isn't really a directional pattern, it doesn't matter which way I sit it on. Although, on saying that, if I turn it one way, it's sort of shaped that way. And if I turn it the other way, it's sort of shaped that way. So I do want to make sure that it, it kind of matches up somewhat. That all my droopy bits are all hanging one way. <laughs> That sounds so rude. I'm not even going to say what I was going to say. But I'm sure some of you are thinking what I was going to say. <laughs> well, I make myself chuckle sometimes. Okay. Anyone walking past my house now, looking in through my window, would be like, a woman sat in the window talking to herself and laughing at herself. <laughs> okay. See, look, look, see, look, I've got a droopy bit there, a droopy part of the pattern, so I want to make sure that I'm drooping the same way on that side. Oh, Carol, I do worry about myself sometimes. Now you see, if I'd inked that side, if I'd had time and inked that side, that would have blended in lovely. But at the moment, it just stands out a little bit too much for me. So I will come back and ink that up. Oh, you see now I've put too much glue on there at the beginning. I know, Ooh, without a shadow of a doubt, that that will ooze out. So I'm going to wipe that in a minute. Pull that in. There we go. Ooh. Okay. Make sure that I'm lined up. To dry in a sec but first of all I just want to measure the surface area so I know what size I'm going to cut my papers so <gasps> slip of tea time see it's all right for you lots up there you can drink your tea as I'm doing this okay oh, I think I just knocked the so that's 10 inch so I'm going to cut it to nine and three quarters. And if this video cuts off, I'll come back in the next video and, and show you how I've finished it off. So I'm going to cut it nine and three quarters by six and three quarters. three quarters pushing up Carol instead of pulling down nine and three quarters five six and three quarters which is the end of the plastic bit Mr Fiskers because I've no measurement to go by Oh, 
and then I fold that in half and what I'm actually going to do this time instead of adding elastic but you can add elastic if you want I am going to add some seam binding some green seam binding do a nice little bow there just do it as a knot for now open up my book put in my papers and Bob's your uncle Fanny's your aunt again okay now then if at any point you want to stitch these before you actually stick them onto your card then you can do the same with these lining papers inside here if you want to use elastic or a thinner ribbon to um, attach your papers or even sew them in place then you can do that's the first video for today the next one is going to be about doing your cover okay off you go go and have a play and i'll see you all later Bye.